Welcome along to Tweet Street Scotland Occupied, home of the satirical saltire. I'm Cinnamon Bridges, aka Peter. Um, with me this evening, we have a guest uh, coming from all the way from Massachusetts in the US. We have Shapeshifter. Hi, Shapeshifter. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi, guys. Um, now, Shapeshifter, a very interesting story with yourself. Um, basically, uh, you are a man who uh, transitioned to live as a female or present as a female only to feel right. as if you've been disillusioned and you've had health issues, etc. Can you tell us a wee bit about your, your early life and, and why why you thought that you should you should transition, please? Uh, I was showing early gender non-conforming behavior. You know, since I was a kid, I was play wanted to play with Barbie dolls. You know. <laughs> Uh, and, um, you know, when I was a kid, I would put a towel around my head and pretend to long hair. And my parents, like, were preventing me from, you know, doing those things. <laughs> they made me feel like it was something shameful. And I'm just a very naturally feminine man. And as I was growing up and um, going to school and everything, I was very much bullied for my femininity. And even my dad told me that I'll never be a real man because I, I cry a lot and I'm like too emotional. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I, but I knew I was gay, but I never knew what trans thing was. So I came to the United States and I went to college. And I remember, um, you know, going to college, I was, as soon as I got to yes, I, I started growing out my hair and I was like, you know, presenting more androgynous, you know, trying to express my femininity finally <laughs> in a country where I wasn't as targeted. So when I went once to class, people asked me like what my pronouns were. And that's when I like started researching, like what the whole transgender thing is. And I was like, yeah, that's me hundred percent. Cause I was like always feeling uncomfortable in my body, but, um, so anyways, I immediately went into the mode of like, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. I need to do all those things, take hormones, like transition to present more female, you know? And I just kind of like went down that rabbit hole and transitioned all the way, had the surgery. And now, like, but, but things never felt right. After the surgery, I got very depressed. Um, I didn't know what it was. Um, I had no energy, no sex drive, just completely like, like my light went out, you know, <laughs> and I didn't know what it was for years. You know, I tried to seek help. I was writing online, asking other trans identified people, like uh, what's going on, like, and a lot of people were writing about similar issues and trans community was like, oh, it's just a post of depression. It's because you had this goal in life to transition into a woman and get other goals in life, you know, but things were not right. On top of like just feeling lethargic and like having no sex drive, no interest in anything. I also had complications from surgery. I just couldn't keep my tunnel open no matter how much I dilated. <laughs> and at the time I didn't understand what was wrong, but as years went by, you know, I was vocal about my situation. I started, I had other people reach out to me and tell me that they also can't keep their tunnels open. On top of that, they had all kinds of other complications. But what I realized that a lot of surgeons and psychiatrists who gave these people letters as well as me, they never really checked on us. They never got in touch with us to see how we're doing, like what's our quality of life is, um, what is our satisfaction with our transition. You know, it's like, that's when I realized they're really not doing research in the long run, what it does to people. And um, also maybe like three months ago, I decided to start taking testosterone because I literally had no sex drive and, you know, I wanted to be intimate with my partner or at least be somewhat excited. So as I started injecting myself with testosterone, it's like part of me came back online. I was like dead for years. And I was like, what the hell? It's like this fog lifted off my brain. <laughs> and I realized all this time, I was just like walking around dead on the inside. I wasn't the real me. You know, I realized what I was supposed to be is just a gay gender non conforming man. And I tried to be a woman, but the biggest realization was I feel like it wasn't part of the reason why I got suckered into the whole trans thing was because society just made me feel like I couldn't make it as a feminine gay man. You know, it's like the lowest niche, like the most hated group. <laughs> so I felt like maybe as a woman, I had better chances, you know, and um, 
even now, as I said on some of other interviews, I have people reaching out to me that are also very feminine gay men and they're saying that we understand that this is dangerous, <laughs> but they also feel like they can't make it as gay men that are feminine and they feel like they need to transition to hold some kind of position in society that is better than being a feminine gay man. And that was sad, you know, I feel like I sacrificed my healthy genitals just to be able to wear makeup and hair. And no matter how successful or rich or I get in love, I'll never get back my penis, you know? <laughs> and it's also like over time, I mean, it takes time to grow, you know? At the time, I felt like I didn't need my penis. I was a woman, like real women don't have penises, you know? The women that I modeled after myself, they don't have penises, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's why now, like, my sexuality has changed as I'm getting testosterone back in my body. I'm like, fuck, I wish I could suck and get my dick sucked, you know? I wish I could fuck my fiance up the ass, and I can't. I will never be able to, and it's like... I guess it just really pains me to see that so many kids are making life altering decisions so early in life because I was also convinced at 24 that I will never need my penis, I don't care. And it just sucks because now I have to take hormones for the rest of my life or I'll die from osteoporosis. And if tomorrow Putin bombs out and I can't access my medication, like I'll be fucked. <laughs> so it's like I don't think it's a hot trend to be like posting videos oh my god two months is, I mean two years on HRT look at my ass look at my titties I don't know how as a society we're glamorizing this medicalization of like <laughs> temporary feelings you know that could go away and I mean and also in my case I definitely had childhood trauma I had all kinds of other issues that needed to be tackled and the way I was affirmed so easily was completely dangerous like now looking back it's like f like fuck, how does this even happen like how the hell was I cleared for surgery like this is insane it's a permanent body modification that completely changes your life and it's like I wasn't ready for what it entailed I can only imagine people who are younger like a lot of them, some of them might be real trans because, you know, I still don't know if real trans is a thing. But honestly, the way the bar is so low right now, like people can go get hormones, at least in America, so easily and get surgeries after a year of being on hormones. Or This is just insane. This is too soon to make such a life-altering decision. I mean, I'm 100% regretting that. Now that I'm back on testosterone, sometimes I wake up and I feel like my penis is there, but it's not. I'm having like a phantom limb thing going on. <laughs> it's very traumatic. And uh, I realized I was just a man and I just effed up. I was young and impressionable. I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be accepted, you know, and um, I screwed up big time. And I just want to share my story so that other people take their time or if there's some feminine boys out there that feel like they don't fit in just know that it gets better and like <laughs> you don't need to hand your life over to surgeons and pharmacists and to be a woman like unfortunately we don't have technology to give us good like functional genitals of opposite sex nor can you change your chromosomes no matter how feminine I am like to my bone I am actually a man you know <laughs> and it took me years to realize and even though I was regretting my surgery earlier because I sacrificed so much for this um I just had no option but keep on brainwashing myself that trading functional penis for a one inch front haul was a fair trade, but it's not a fair trade. <laughs> but I can't get any refunds and I can't go back. And uh, unfortunately, I realized that a lot of science and statistics that's out there about complication rates and uh, regret rates is very bogus because they're really not checking up on people. I've talked to so many detransitioners and people that are still trans identified, their lives are ruined. Some of them had even worse complications than I had. Some people are sitting at home with colostomy bags. I know one guy who is like a uh, detransition male, you know, he's licking urine and like has other issues. I don't want to like expose these people, but I'm just like <laughs> uh, sharing some of their story. <laughs> like, this is just bad. I feel really sad for my community, which is, I guess, a feminine gay man that are, a lot of them going to get caught up in this gender ideology bullshit. And it would have not been so dangerous if it wasn't medicalized as a science that needs more exploration. The hormones that are there prescribing to children have already been banned in Sweden and Finland. I remember Sweden being like a, at forefront of transgender care. I remember the surgeon that did my surgery on me, my first one. He was so proud that he like trained in Sweden because it was like one of European countries to lead. And they already banned hormones for children. So that's like a red flag. 
flag. Moreover, in America, we have FDA, Food and Drug Administration. It has not, the, the hormones that children are getting or people are getting that they're trans, it's off label. It's not specifically approved by FDA to, pre, to treat so-called gender dysphoria, you know? And uh, as I started doing more research, I realized a lot of people that think they're trans have other issues too, you know, like autism, borderline, OCD. I have ADHD as well. So it's like, we definitely, but unfortunately people are not being offered extra help, extra psychiatric help because a lot of people think it's transphobic to offer them help, to offer them extra therapy because it's a conversion therapy. Also a lot of allies think that trans is a new gay and they don't want to look stupid, you know, so they think that by supporting trans movements, it's like they don't want to be like, left behind they don't want to be called out for being like they think like oh maybe back in the days they were homophobic by not supporting gay people so now they're trans to redeem themselves and support trans community but it's honestly the more i think of what, of what happened to me i just feel like they are literally transing a lot of gay people away and gender non-conforming and just mentally vulnerable people that's what i think that's my personal opinion after dedicating 10 years of my life and identifying as a trans woman just to realize I'm just a dude and <laughs> I should have never had like a boob job or a t or get my penis removed. That was completely insane that I ever subjected myself to that. Okay, okay, shapeshifter. Um, right, so uh, mm -hmm. you can take a breath now. Right, so here we go. Um, what, what, what country was it that you arrived in the USA from and what attracted you to the USA? Did you have those... Were you um, feeling as if you, you, you had to transition from um, a man to attempt to live as a woman? What gave you that, what gave you that uh, inclination at a young age? Um, because I, when I, when I realized I was attracted to men early on and I grew up, I don't want to say the exact country, but it's in Eastern Europe because I still have a family um, back in the home country that I grew up in that doesn't know that I, you know, transition and I feminize myself so much. And my parents still live there. So I honestly like would rather not name the country, but it's a very conservative country, predominantly Muslim. So growing up, like I was targeted for my femininity and like I knew I was gay and like, and Islam is very homophobic, you know, they're not accepting of gay, you know. So I knew I was gay and like I knew I was brainwashed that attraction to men was bad, but also I did have a desire to grow out my hair and present more feminine. And I think I wanted to come to yes because um, right early on I knew like um, I'm not gonna have a good life in the country that I was born in as a gay man because especially a feminine gay man, at least if you act straight and you can pass as straight, you have more privileges. You're not as much of a target, but I'm just a feminine short man. So I was, people think that this is an act that I'm like projecting my voice or like specifically acting feminine right now, but it's not, it's a real me. And like, when I walk down the street back in the country where I grew up in, I would always get called faggot because the way I walk is just more feminine. Like I diggle my hips, like it's just the way I am. I try, trust me, I've tried to butch it up and be more manly so I don't get picked on by kids, you know, but I just knew that I had to go to West, you know, where gay was more accepted, but um, unfortunately shortly after I got caught up. But I also realized that in a lot of, uh, you know, even among gay men, like femininity is something that's not appreciated because femininity is seeing something that's weakness. You know, even a lot of gay men, they don't want to like be associated with other feminine gay men. <laughs> so it was kind of like all those different issues pushed me into believing that um, I was really a woman. And almost the minute I discovered that, um, I became very homophobic as well. I was like, I'm not gay. I'm just a woman trapped in a man's body. And I kind of started distancing myself from gay community. And it's almost like I went into mode like, yay, I'm not gay. Like something I was like... <laughs> Really for the whole my whole life it was finally a way out to be like oh I just have a medical condition that I'm gonna treat and take care of and I'm gonna be heteronormative it was like my chance to get hetero woman you know it's like almost in my mind the way society made me believe it was a better option a more privileged option than being a feminine gay man if that makes sense you know and I'm what, trying to explain what it the best you, I can what gave you what gave you that belief then shapeshifter what gave you the, the belief that you could transition from being a man to a woman what was the societal shift for you that gave you the belief um, that, that could happen well as I started uh you know cross-dressing more and like growing out my hair more and wearing makeup I started getting more attention from men and it's almost like 
straight men that bullied me as a kid, they somehow were attracted to me. And it was just, a. It, now that I'm in therapy, maybe part of it was because I got bullied so bad by men and I felt like I could never fit in as a man. It was just almost a way to maybe get accepted finally by men. It was just really effed up. And, and I guess as I went to a cult meeting, also known as Transgender Conference, we have one of those in Massachusetts every year in January, it's called First Event. As I went there, I saw other people who were trans identified and they all told me how much their life was better, you know, post transition, how was their authentic self after getting all those surgeries. And um, as a gay man who was like, especially growing up, I was more chubby and effeminate. I never quite felt right in my body. So I thought that like by doing all the modifications to my body, I will finally get rid of that feeling, you know, I guess what people call gender dysphoria. But the truth of the matter, at least in my case, it was body dysmorphia, that even through my transition, as I got more surgeries and all that, I just never felt fully sexy, you know, no matter how many people were attracted to me, no matter how many people wanted to have sex with me or wanted to talk to me, I just never felt right in my body. I still don't, you know, even when I go now out, I get attention, but I just shut down like that shy kid that was traumatized, never went away. I'm like working on that right now to build myself up despite everything I've been through. But now I realize I'm a man without a dick and it's hard for me to have like sex. It's hard for me to orgasm. So it kind of like ruined my confidence even more, you know? Um, yeah, so I guess, again, to answer your question, I guess seeing other people at the conference and seeing people online, you know, transgender influencers made me believe that I could really transcend my biology and become an actual woman, you know? <laughs> and who, who were those influences, if you don't mind, those people online that you've seen that made you believe that, that that you could transition um, from from male to female. I mean, it's it, it, obviously you're aware now that that's an impossibility, and, and you've suffered the consequences of, of um, a mind trick. Um, so, who who were those people that gave you that belief in the first place? If you don't mind me asking, I guess a lot of it um, was uh, you know people who gave me hormones and stuff because I went to one of the biggest hospitals that like as LGBT like research and stuff, they were one of the first hospitals like to test, to do trials on Truvada, which is like uh, medication to prevent HIV and stuff. Like, so when I went there and they like gave me the hormones and they affirmed that I was indeed a woman, you know, and I needed all those treatments, it kind of sealed it in my mind because I grew up in a Cold War country. So when I came to US, it kind of, because there were doctors involved and, uh, you know, actual like, <laughs> um people who like give you medicine i just in my opinion i thought it was more legitimate you know i felt like it is indeed medical condition and i kind of took with it and ran it and i kind of brainwashed myself and my family that i was indeed a woman and i needed all those like things to make me feel better and make me a real woman you know <laughs> and also like people i started dating at the time they were also started treating me as a woman and telling me that i am indeed a woman but now i realize like a lot of those people are just kind of homophobic and they almost want their partner to identify as a woman. <laughs> so they feel less bad about it being attracted to a penis. So like looking back, that was what it really was. It was just a bunch of different things. And also finally I was able to wear makeup and just kind of walk on the street and not feel like people want to kill me. <laughs> you know? And like, um, it kind of made me happy in the moment. And it, in my mind, it also affirmed that maybe I was meant to be a woman, you know? And, just got and made a mistake or something and I didn't did land in a wrong body but looking back I realized there was nothing wrong with my body I just needed to some time to integrate with it better you know <laughs> and to accept who I really am. Now, there's, there's, been a, there's been a lot of um, uh, issues in Scotland with the, the trans ideology uh, and the belief of trans and also within other countries on the same island uh, for instance um, Wales and uh, England, but there's. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share a, a video now. I'd like you to get your view on it and, and and what your thoughts are to see if there was anything in this that perhaps um, encountered your own young life that, that influenced Jenny, if you don't mind. So we'll share this at the minute and then I'll get okay. your views on it. Absolutely, yeah, let's do it. Sounds fun. Here we go. That, that, that's that's uh, some of the information um, 
that's going about that they there has been instances where the Scottish government have been asking school kids questions about the last time that they had uh, anal sex or, or vaginal sex. Oh my God. Oral sex. Um, was that something that, that you as a youngster encountered that made you believe that um, the possibility of changing sex um, w was encouraged? Um. Um, again, I grew up in a conservative country where we didn't have sexual education and sex was a taboo subject. Again, I'm a gay man, so like I feel like my sexuality, I couldn't run away from. Like when I went through puberty, I just felt natural attraction to <laughs> men, and I didn't know anything about like anal you know, sex or anything like that. I mean, I do have childhood trauma that was not related to sex education or <laughs> things up online, and. I do believe that maybe that childhood trauma did influence, you know, me as well, like me wanting to be a woman. It's something that I'm working on with my psychiatrist. So to answer your question, like it didn't happen in school, but I did have, you know, a sexual abuse type of situation in my childhood. So that I think may have influenced how I felt later on in my life, because I do feel like early childhood has a lot to do with how we make decision as an adult <laughs> that's my opinion I guess and yeah. um so yes and no again no because in school I grew up in a conservative country I didn't grow up in the west we sex is a taboo subject I knew right away like I'm attracted to men and there's nothing I can do with it I don't think it was influenced by outside forces <laughs> but me wanting to be a woman and like um and just being more vulnerable to ideology might have been my childhood trauma, which happened early on, and it would it had nothing to do with school. So, um, so yeah. Um, well, will you continue to live uh, and present uh, as you are at the the moment, shapeshifter? Um, I do. I mean, I just hate my body part that was given to me because it never really worked and. It's just very hard to, you know, enjoy that part that was given to me. It's not a female part. It's just like approximation of female parts. Um, my partner, he enjoys me female presenting, you know, like, no, I don't, I shouldn't say female presenting, but have longer hair and all that. I do enjoy it. Like, I've been very honest about it. I do enjoy wearing makeup and hair as of now. I don't know, like, as I'm getting more successful in my body, like, I definitely feel different. So I don't know, maybe down the line, I will cut off my hair and stop wearing makeup, like, who knows? But right now, I'm just like, nothing, make, makeup and hair never made me a woman, you know, that was a delusion <laughs> that I was living with. And I guess I don't need to remove it to be a man. I'm still a man to my bone. And uh, I'm screwed either way because I never had a <laughs> place in society as a super feminine gay man. I never fit in as a woman because society doesn't accept me as a woman either because I'm not a woman <laughs> and now like as I'm detransitioning or I'm dropping trans label the transitioners don't think I'm really de trans because I don't look like a traditional man but I think again my message is like if you guys don't want people transitioning and taking drugs you just have to accept that some of the men are very feminine it's unfortunate cruel joke of nature I guess I feel like a cruel joke I do and I'm, I, I feel bad you know but it is me I guess so if we're gonna, hopefully in the future, kids won't be taking hormones and transitioning and I hope they'll just be kids and they don't need to be learning about any kind of sex when they're that young, you know. It, one thing I can tell you as humans, kids are not very, very, very much influenced by social media, pornography, by what other people say. And it's when we're younger, we're definitely, our palate is cleaner, so we're even more prone to influence it. I got influenced at in my early 20s, you know, I can only imagine when you're even younger, you kind of want to fit in and be cool and be like edgy. So it's very dangerous. I don't feel like sex education or anything sexual or pronoun bullshit should be that young in school. Like it could definitely confuse kids. You know, I got confused so easily. I confused my femininity and desire to express femininity for an actual desire to become a biological woman, which we're not able to do with technology that we have right now. So. <laughs> I don't know. I hope I'm making some kind of friends. Uh, of course. I mean, no, you'd said something and because I've watched a few of your videos. I've watched the video that you, you, you had done on mm -hmm. your channel with your sister, um, with the, the, yeah. pers the person that you termed as your sugar daddy. Um, and, <laughs> um, you, you had mentioned, I mean, there was, there was a couple of things that you'd mentioned um, about 
cult meetings now. Um, yeah. As you say, you, you, you've you suffered a, a mutilation of your body parts. Um, yeah. Was that, was that, a, 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 do you feel that the, the, the cult meetings was the final driver towards that or had you already? Um, it was a final drive because when I went to cult meetings, you know, they had, you know, those cult meetings also known as transgender conferences, you know, they're sponsored by all those greedy surgeons, you know. At least at that time it was. Like, I had my surgery in 2015 and I was going to cult meetings like maybe 2012, 13. Like, so that's when I saw the surgeons and I saw other so called trans women, you know, and I was kind of wanted to be as beautiful as them. In a way, it was kind of free marketing, you know, for ideologies that's kind of dangerous. Right. That's why on one of my videos, I was kind of pleading with trans influencers to drop the trans label because it's just so dangerous. Because even now I get messages from people who are like, oh, we don't care what happened to you. We want to take hormones to look as beautiful as you. I'm like, this is not beautiful. Like, modifying your body to the point where you don't look like your original self. <laughs> this is not beautiful. This is not healthy. This is dangerous. <laughs> I mean, um, also taking hormones was a slippery slope. You know, people make it sound like it's not a big deal. You know, what if just put kids on blockers for a while till they have to buy them more time. But the minute I took hormones, it honestly made me a little more depressed because and I felt like, oh, I'm depressed because I'm a trans woman. I need to modify my body even more. So I started creating, you know, so-called bottom surgery. I wanted to get rid of my penis. And I had to reflect back on my life. I'm like, how did I go from being a proud gay man to being like this woman? I'm a woman. I'm not a man. Don't fucking dare to call me a man. Don't call me he. You know what I mean? It's like, and I realized a lot of it was hormones. You know, when I took them. Uh, it kind of affected the way I felt on the inside. I definitely, for a second, I guess I tricked my body into believing that I was meant to be a woman and this penis didn't belong on my body. It definitely confused me more and pushed me into surgeries further. So I feel like a lot of it is slippery soap and I can only imagine how can it, it can confuse kids. And also looking back with everything that I went through, being now back on testosterone, I feel like it's an, hormones are an important part of who you really are and it's like not something to be messed with just for aesthetic purposes like this is fucked up this idea that like oh it's not a big deal to feminize yourself or masculinize yourself by you know taking artificial hormones and doing body modifications that is so dangerous and so like toxic you know what I mean I could have I lost so many years of just like being jerk off being able to jerk off as a man you know <laughs> or like Instead, I was just trying to be a woman and, you know, trying to fit some stereotype of a woman I had in my head and which has been so toxic. I had two surgeries on my voice. That's why my voice is fucked up right now. I can't even like talk too long. People can barely hear me. And I did all that. I went from being confident kid, like when I was in graduate school, like when there was a class discussion, I was like always participating. But once I started transitioning, I almost like became quiet and shut down because I didn't want to like use my voice because people would be like oh that's a man you know <laughs> this is so fucked up and I lost years almost like trying not to be out in public too much or like talking to people because I was so self-conscious like oh my god people are gonna know I'm a man I am a man you know what I mean it's like I lost years of trying to be something that I wasn't and that's so sad you know I feel like it's a very slippery slope it's very dangerous very traumatic to live uh, trying to live as the opposite sex and like, and still, and just realize that you'll never be opposite sex, you know? <laughs> you can be a close approximation, but like, is that worth it? In my opinion, and in my situation, it totally wasn't worth it. Okay, so there was something that you said on one of your videos that um, sometimes things aren't quite appropriate, or they don't seem appropriate, however, they're quite funny. Um, <laughs> I, I, I th the the humour side of it, um, so of course the poster like the, the background poster that i've got at the minute i sent to you and asked you your permission before i posted it because yeah. i feel I, I feel that sometimes um humor can be lost but it can also humor can also make a situation a wee bit easier um have you seen the ricky gervais supernature um show on netflix uh, no, I have not seen that show. I don't know what it's about. No. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, he's uh. a comedian. He's a comedian um, who he's an English comedian um, who was speaking about the trans ideology. Just just talking about yeah. things in general and the trans ideology. 
And basically, it was clever enough to say all the things that trans people had said online. And the uproar that the trans community have against Ricky Gervais and people like Ricky Gervais who have doubts and don't agree with the ideology, um, who are critical of the ideology, they 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 uh, try to to make him out as being a transphobe for, for saying the same things that trans people have said openly. Um, what's your thoughts on the ideology of trans now that you are feeling aggrieved about the damage that you've done to your body and how you'll never have a, the sex life that you 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 could have had uh, versus right. versus this ideology of this is the only way and everybody else is wrong and you must you must you must. What what's your thoughts on that? I don't think transition is the only way after I've been through. I feel like sometimes it just takes time to understand who you really are and <laughs> you don't need to go to uh, and get on hormones and somebody affirm your delusions in the moment because sometimes you can get over it, you know, or just realize that you don't need, again, all those insane body modifications to be happy. I completely don't agree with ideology. I think it's very toxic, very dangerous, straight up. I think maybe initially it was helping some people like me, maybe who are super masculine or super feminine to fit in society without being a target. But the problem is society has to grow and understand that like we're just natural variation within our own sexes. There is some very masculine woman and there is some very feminine men and we don't need we're perfect the way we are, you know, and like running with a narrative that if you don't transition, you're going to kill yourself is completely dangerous because if anything, there's some studies showing that people who are post-op who has a bottom surgery are uh, closer to, you know, the S word. <laughs> and honestly, I went through darkest times. I'm literally like coming to reality and realizing how much damage I did to my body and how I lost my life to ideology. Like my best years, you know, my twenties. <laughs> It's just like, it's really mind boggling and I'm completely heartbroken that they are online now saying that, oh, you don't need any gender dysphoria. You don't even need to be feminine or masculine to be trans. Anybody can be trans, you know. This is completely dangerous because they're expanding this umbrella that's paired with questionable medicalization, medicalization and they're selling it as medically necessary, which in my opinion is not, you know. <laughs> it may be necessary to a very small percentage, but somehow it's gotten hijacked by a lot more people. It's more mainstream and apparently a lot more people think that they're trans. I don't think all those people are really trans. Like this is completely insane and dangerous. It has to stop this ideology is completely toxic. Like we need to immediately ban all those surgeries and hormones for people under 18 and maybe people under 25 as well, because it's just, your brain is not fully like formed till you're 25 to 26 according to some studies, you know, and it's like, I, I didn't grasp how that one decision changed my entire life for the rest of my life. You know, I, I was, I guess I was an adult. I was 18 plus obviously, but I still looking back, I still didn't understand just how much it was going to change my life and how forever I'm going to be a medical patient. Like now that I'm like older, it sucks that when I travel, I have to pack like needles and testosterone, you know, it fucking sucks. Wow. I have to poke myself. Like, I don't think kids are ready for this. I don't think, I don't want any kids to go through that. Like, honestly, this well, sucks. I'm so angry that they're saying this is the I've, only way. I've got yeah. a few questions coming in from uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. So Lisa Keogh, okay, yeah, Lisa Keogh um, who had the audacity to say that a woman has a vagina um, and was classed as transphobic, amongst other things, um, other bi biological things, has asked that, um, at what point did you realize that you couldn't be a woman? Was that shortly after, or w w did you have doubts beforehand but still went ahead? Um, it kind of was a long process. I started, something was wrong ever since I had the surgery. So my body was trying to heal the wounds that they inflicted upon me. But they were like, no, this is just neo vagina, keep on dilating. And uh, no matter how hard I dilated, I went for a revision. And I mean, even after that, no matter how hard I dilated, my body kept on trying to close it. And I realized it's something that doesn't belong on my body. And that's why my body was trying to heal it all the time. And I was really going against my biology and against my actual anatomy. And, um, and then as I went online and shared my story, I realized I was just um, 
being ignored by trans community as just like 1% with complications. But people who were more gender critical, they were like more understanding that like what happened to me was just like unnecessary body modifications. That's like, <laughs> they don't have a good technology to give to people even a good approximation of genitals and that's when I started realizing that I was like oh shit I just I'm not a woman and I'm just like a man who just had this body modification to hopefully fit in and play into my delusions that I had when I was younger you know and it's like but the final story again was taking testosterone I just felt more myself you know I felt like all these years I was not myself as I said, like uh, remnants of my penis started coming online. I started feeling tingly sensation, you know, and I was like, wow, I haven't felt like actual tingling down in my crouch like in years. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck, I lost years not even being sexual. I felt like I was asexual and like, it was just so crazy that I lost all these years. And that's when I realized I was never meant to be a woman and I should have just been enjoying my penis and not buy into stupid ideology and just like, live my life as a man or whatever but don't get any more body modifications like even my breasts I regret it honestly I do it's just to remove them right now it will be just additional surgery but I'm scared of doctors at this point so I will I mean I mean just as you're saying that and and as you as, as we'd said like in the email between each other when we were arranging this this um this live stream um Sometimes the humour is, you've got to take a wee bit of the humour, but as you're saying that, as you're speaking there, I'm actually sitting holding my crotch going, nah, I, 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 like, I, couldn't, I couldn't go through it. Like, what you went through, it's like, nah. When you're talking about I, how you, you get a tingling, and you, you, it's like, what, what, what? oh, no, no, like, I'm caveman-esque. I, I, I believe that a man is a man, and that's that's it. It doesn't matter how feminine or whatever you are. And if there's anybody listening in and you're, you're thinking, no, I'm, I'm caveman-esque. I've got the beliefs that, ah, well, you can't, you can't change your sex. You can think other things, but you can't change your sex. Um, where, where does the humour come for, for you? What, what, what do you look for in, in the humorous side to try and get you through? I think the humour... Humor, I guess, because when I was a trans woman, I was taking things so seriously. God forbid somebody called <laughs> what surgeon inflicted upon me, you know, and mutilated genitals, I would lose my shit. I just went years from being like so devoted to ideology and kind of almost not fighting for trans rights, but being like a good devoted <laughs> person to ideology. And now I'm so angry with what I did. Just like you said, like now that I realize I'm a man, I'm like, wow just how brainwashed was i by this ideology to let people knock me out and operate on like healthy tissues and give me this like dumb approximation and just discard me later on you know it's like i, I now I realize how dangerous like cult and ideologies can be when people buy into them blindly you know <laughs> without really taking time to consider alternative other opinions you know and that's why I, it honestly comes from place of anger. My human comes, my humor comes from place of anger and a feeling that I have nothing to lose. When you take something so important from a man, <laughs> the man is gonna be angry. <laughs> and I just like, I, I don't think I'm angry at trans ideology alone. I'm very honest that I'm angry at society as well. Like I said, I was fucked by just nightmare of the fact that the way I was born, you know? And like, it's just a difficult journey either way. So I'm at that point where I'm like, I'm 31 now. I just, I went through years caring what people think about me, trying to be a good woman. And it's like, I got so tired of everything. You know, even when I was a trans woman, some people who dated me, they're like, oh, you look like a tranny. Don't wear too much makeup. You look like a dude, you know? It's like, I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm gonna wear makeup as much as I want. I don't know how much life I have left. You know, honestly, part of it was brush up with COVID as well. You know, I was like, you know, like I everybody came so close to actual death. And then also when I realized what I did to my body, I realized I was a man. I also came very close to that word. And I'm like, once you go so close to like living this reality, you just stop caring. You know what I mean? It's like, if you don't laugh, life is a good like medicine. You know, doctors failed me and now I have to find my own healing, unfortunately. So I feel like laughter and finding humor and not taking yourself so seriously. I think that's honestly my defense mechanism is the last straw I'm holding on to trying to survive because this is not fun. <laughs> Realizing that I'm a band who like bought into this bullshit and lost my dick, it's, it's not fun, I'm telling you. Like I wanna, I went from being able to have five orgasms today, a day and jerking off 
being like, oh, I'm a woman, like I'm not supposed to have a male sex drive, you know what I mean? That's what almost pisses me off when like, oh, a woman can't have a penis. No, you have a male sex drive, like you're not a woman, I'm sorry. Like, honestly, seeing Leah Thomas ever pissed me off, that was like one of the final struggles as well. I'm like, this is the ideology I used to be part of, is this a joke? I'm like, <laughs> is this man really competing in like <laughs> female sports and saying he's a woman? Like, and while still has a dick, I'm like, no, like I left my dick at the altar and I still didn't become a woman. Like, no, that's not a woman. I'm sorry. Honestly, like I'm just pissed. And yeah. Well, I mean, like obviously you you as you say, you feel as if you've you've lost a part of that. Um what what I'm gonna try and do, if you don't mind, is I'm gonna try and play a wee video clip of What's classed as a as a penis here within the the UK, um, and hopefully you see the humorous side of, of what I'm about to do because um, this is classed as a penis within the UK. This is the Prime Minister of the UK. <laughs> Right, so that's the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Uh, he was having parties while people were dying um, through the pandemic. Um, What's your thoughts on the political scene within the United States? How how is how is the political scene um, influencing the trans movement within the United States? Honestly, I I want to leave Massachusetts because of that. Because of, I used to be a left wing, obviously, you know, but now more right leaning because I just don't think like a lot of this leftists who are supporting the whole trans ideology know what they're supporting you know and they're just like this is straight up dangerous this is not the same as gay rights and I also don't agree with the whole left left political ideas right now so I'm actually becoming more and more right wing and I want to move out of Massachusetts and I'm hoping that we get a Republican president next <laughs> that's like a not super crazy Republican president but like moderate I don't know I don't want to say more Republican like I'm, I'm new to politics I stayed out of politics for years you know I just didn't understand much about it but now I realize how important it is is the way like everything society shapes you know <laughs> and honestly I kind of leaning more conservative now I wish we just went back to men and women <laughs> you know <laughs> I feel like a lot of uh, right-wing people in America, they don't hate gay people. They're just really concerned about the whole um, medicalization of transgender thing and the whole like teaching kids in school about sex. And like, <laughs> I think uh, I'm against that too. So I'm more and more right-winning and I'm hoping that after Biden, we will definitely get, uh, I mean, I was really upset when Biden went in front of cameras and said that the best thing um, parent can do is affirm their child's gender. I was so mad about it as somebody who's been through the system. That is extremely dangerous, endorsing some things that you don't even know what trans is. Like nobody really 100% knows. <laughs> so why would you go and say something like that? It's pretty much kind of endorsing child abuse in a way or something that hasn't been tested. I'm sure a lot of those children are just gay kids. They don't need hormones. They don't need their healthy body parts cut off by the time they're barely in their teens, you know, it's like, I'm completely mad at the level. And then him saying trans seniors, like, like who are transgender seniors? I've never met transgender seniors. Like <laughs> a lot of people don't make it that far. It's very traumatic to be a trans identified person or even gender non-conforming gay person. It's like who cool. sometimes gets swept up in trans ideology. It's just very traumatic. Like, 
because when you have so much trauma, it's hard to live like a long life. So it's like, that's why I don't agree with left ideology. I'm definitely more right winning. I know, I don't know much about UK politics. I know Boris Johnson is controversial. I personally like him because I'm biased. He's like my type as a guy. So I'm kind of- right, well, Hold on, whoa, 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 hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, shape shifter. Right, wait a minute, I need, I need to say this. He's a wanker, right? Just like, you, you, you can't like Boris Johnson, right? You just can't. He, he's, he, he's, he's, just, he's just a wanker, right? Anyway. Carry on with what you were saying, and then we'll come back to this bit in a wee minute. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so I'm more right-wing, and I'm definitely more getting interested in politics, because, you know, I'm also, like, in my daily life, I'm, I'm interested in finance and investing, you know, day trading, kind of. Uh, so it all kind of all tied together, so I definitely started paying, uh, paying more attention to politics, and I feel like... I'm definitely more right-winning, right, right-winning, but because I live in the US, I don't know much about UK. I know that he did go to that party when um, people were literally having COVID crisis and that's not cute because he's a leader of the country and um, he should have like, he shouldn't be partying when his people are actually dying because it's tragedy, tragedy, you know, honestly. Like, I mean, I know some people who work as a pro don't believe COVID is real and I don't know anybody who actually died from COVID, so, but I know that people were upset that he went to that party. But again, as I said, like he gets a pass from me because to me, he looks very cute. So <laughs> I can't be mad at Boris Johnson, but it's, I'm just biased because I'm a gay dude who's attracted to chubby middle-aged guys, so. <laughs> Ah, I'm right, biased. I see, I see, right, so you're right, aye, it's power, power and money, right, it's cool, um, so, if you, if you, you could have a, a vision for, let's, let's not try and make it too far in advance, but let's say in the next five years for you, what would you see as a success for yourself in the next five years, in regards to the experience that you've already gone through, what you've got to go through and how you could guide other people to avoid the pitfalls that you've fallen <laughs> into and, and, and excel in other areas? Well, one of my goals right now is to keep on doing little interviews and having people hear me because right now gender critical movement is a minority, but I feel like the tides are going to change and I feel like we're going to have a whole wave of detransitioners. Unfortunately, a lot of detransitioners don't speak out because they're traumatized, they're ashamed. Some of them like also hold the same views as I do, you know, could be that could be considered transphobic, but they're afraid to speak out because they're afraid to lose their jobs. Also, there are a lot of people who have nothing to do with ideology and they're concerned as well, but they're also afraid to speak out. Like my fiance, you know, he is more left winning, but also like he's afraid to say a lot of things on camera as well because, and my sister, because it's just like, society has come to the point where we kind of lost freedom of speech and it gets kind of convoluted with hate speech, you know? And I wish when I was younger, somebody sat me down and be like, you're a gay dude, there's nothing wrong with that. You can wear makeup, skirt, cross dress, but you're never gonna be a woman. If somebody sat me down and said that to me, I would have probably not subject myself to all this bullshit. So I definitely wanna raise awareness I'm also hoping to get married and hoping to settle somewhere away from society because I just feel traumatized with society. With my detransition, I don't even know like which bathroom to use anymore, what to do anymore. So I think the best solution for me would be just to isolate myself from society. And I would like you know, long ground to just leave on an island where I don't interact with anybody other than my fiance and immediate family members. So that would be like ideal for me because I just want to be away from people, I feel like. I'm traumatized on all fronts, but I want to make sure that people don't subject myself, themselves to this unnecessary surgery. And I want society to change. I feel like a lot of it, part of the reason why trans ideology to off so much, I feel like it is my body modification trend in a way. And uh, a lot of it was just mainstream as well. You know, the Kardashians, all those people, you know, glamorizing plastic surgeries and portraying certain like phenotypes of like people, you know, and I feel like I just want this trend to die out. I want to go back to just promoting, embracing your original part, no matter what you look like as a man, as a woman, just embracing who you are, what God universe gave you, you know, and just be like, there's nothing wrong with you. Just instead of practicing radical medical intervention, like trans ideology tries to shove down our throats, we need to learn and practice radical self-love, radical self-acceptance. And I feel like society will be a better place then. So that's what I want to promote within the next few years. But again, my long-term goal is just like to get married and just be away from people, leave like five acres away from people in the woods. Like I'm done. <laughs> right. So um, 
You want you want a you want a retire from uh, public view um, within the next five years. Um, um, I don't mind being online, but I want to be hidden away from society. So, <laughs> so, so, so how do you achieve that? Well, uh, <laughs> part of it is honestly talking my fiance into moving somewhere more rural because. He likes city, you know, he's a raver. He likes going to concerts and shows. And I'm just like, I'm more a country person. I know I look like a person who likes going to club, but I'm really not like, I mean, I made a, made a compromise and obviously I love my fiance. And I also have an ex-husband, you know, the sugar daddy thing. <laughs> it's honestly a joke, like he's not my sugar daddy. I mean, but I knew people was gonna sing anyway. So who gives a fuck? Like, I honestly want to kind of bring my family together because um, you know, I don't want to leave my ex-husband behind, so I want to, like, move him um, to a new house, you know, and uh, just have all my family together, because I have three cats with him, I have one cat with my new fiance, so it's like, and I, I don't like abandoning people that I consider my family, <laughs> you know, because I have borderline personality disorders, I don't like being abandoned, so, like, I'm trying to get my life together and have, like, at least because my ex-husband he's like 80 years old and he has all kinds of health issues so i need to take care of him even being here like in colorado for two weeks i'm really stressing out you know i'm really worried for him so i just want to bring my life together just so i can do more activism and not my and not <laughs> worry about my family you know and I, again i would like to leave on like self-sustained land because i no longer trust pharmacies i no longer trust governments that's why i'm sad that i have to go to pharmacy to get hormones you know i can't just go live in the woods <laughs> because i need to inject myself with testosterone and that sucks if i still had my deck i wouldn't have to do that you know it's like um yeah i want to live off grid i want to have my own access to some food, you know, because you just don't know. I just no longer, after everything I've been through, I trust the system a little too much. I don't trust the system as much anymore. So I want to be as much self-sustained as I can be, you know, that's my long-term goal. I don't know how I'm going to get there. It definitely needs money, but also convincing my fiance that like, maybe city living is not all, all it is cracked out to be, you know, so. Well, well I mean, I, I, living, living has got one of those things where, you try and, uh, but I don't know about you, but um, you try and live within your means. You try and uh, do the best that you can. So, I, I mean, I sincerely hope that whatever happens to you now, whatever happens through your life, I mean, you're obviously, you're, congratulations on your uh, being engaged and uh, getting, hey. getting married. Um, that was mentioned earlier. Um, so th things are, things are um, looking smooth for you at the moment and, and long may it continue because there's been, obviously there's been a, a, a very rough transition um, from youth to where you're at at the moment. Um, and if you can get to a, a lovely beachfront um, and just relax by the sea, is, is that something that you would see as a success for your life? Um, honestly, like even yesterday when I got like engaged, I was still thinking about gender and activism because now that I'm awake and like people call it peaks, I honestly never used that word before. The only time I've heard that word is when people do psychedelic, they peak. And I feel like you peak, you peak, you left like the cult, you know the truth, you know, and I'm like, now I feel like I know the truth and I realize what's happening to people out there that they're brainwashed and <laughs> I honestly the activism I'm wanting to get my message out is taking out up a lot of my space mind space but I don't know when if I was because I'm kind of on vacation right now seeing my fiance you know being away from Massachusetts I, I it still occupies my brain and I feel like even if I was on the beach on the water right now first of all the sea levels are rising I don't think I want a long term move on the water I don't think I want that um I, I don't think right now I can relax even if I was on the beach and um but in the long term again I much rather have a little lake <laughs> and some land I don't want like an actual ocean because that's gonna rise <laughs> in the future and probably drown us so that's the way I feel um success for me would be I guess again having a few acres of land having a well of water <laughs> having some crops you know some chickens laying eggs that would be to me a success and not having to be dependent on having to work nine to five or society to exist you know that would be my ultimate goal you know in life 
And um, yeah, so that's hopefully will happen to me soon. I don't know if it will take five years or how much, but um, yeah, we will see. <laughs> I mean, my fiance, he makes good money. So, but um, again, that's why I'm like concerned his identity because I'm so radical right now. I don't want him like losing his job over things that I say. <laughs> So yeah, it's sure. kind of scary, you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs by not aligning with mainstream ideas, so. And and, and what sort of ideas do you think that um, you have that are different from the mainstream? Well, at this point, for sure, that like, I don't think trans is a thing. I don't know if it's like it's one big marketing thing for porn industry, for media, <laughs> you know. I think it's just a label that got thrown on people who always existed anyway <laughs> and kind of repackaged it and sold it to media, you know, and people are like living for it right now. But I feel like the tides are about to be turned. I don't know how many years it's going to take. We will definitely have a lot of kids detransitioning and regretting what their parents did to them. So once that happens, you know, the tides will turn. And I do feel like the whole transgender medicalization thing is almost like lobotomies of like, 21st century. I feel like this is a big umbrella that captured a lot of people that are not really suffering with, with gender dysphoria. That the only cure for it is surgeries and hormones. Like I think vast majority of those people will either grow out of it or just move on with their lives, realize they're gay, or they just want to cross dress or whatever. But they're not actually trying to be another biological sex. <laughs> um, that's my opinion, and I think. Main, somehow this has taken off in mainstream like wildfire you know and it's like if you're trans you know like people will jerk off to you and if you're trans people will hire you for a movie and like put you in mainstream movies and give you brand deals on youtube you know and it's kind of like but in a way it's a billboard for unethical surgeons that really don't know what they're doing they're tweaking their surgeries and techniques as they go and it's all just greedy pharmacies. They're creating lifelong patients. Like I'm a cash cow to them for the rest of my life and I'm so mad about it. I ha every year I have to do blood tests now, test my hormonal levels. I have um, I have a lump in my breast. It's kind of not visible on camera, but I have a bunch of MRIs done on that. We don't know if it's hormone related, what it is. So eventually I'm gonna have to remove my breast implants. That's more money. I don't know if insurance will cover my detransition. <laughs> I don't fucking know how that's gonna go down. I mean, thank God insurance at least covers testosterone. So I'm um, really, it's uncharted territory. I don't know how much lifespan I have after everything I did to my body. Cause I really destroyed, it's not just balls and dick. It's a big part of how I thought I was so young. I thought uh, hormones were just for titties and ass, but hormones are important. They work in sync with the whole of, with all of your body, your blood supply, your heart, your brain, your sexuality. It's just like a big part of who you are. You don't just mess with something like that just to present more female, like that's dumb. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised this is just so um, mainstream at this point. And I'm in minority, you know, even with rat fam, rat fam that are supporting me, right wing people, Christian people, we're just still in minority, you know what I mean? We need more mainstream allies, like, uh, speak out about this and be like, you know what, maybe hormones for kids are not such a good idea. Maybe let's just kids be kids, you know, let them discover their own blueprint from within <laughs> without any outside influences. <laughs> Well, exactly, exactly, shapeshifter. So, I mean, that, that, I'm going to show people the poster just to, because it is quite stark, just what you've said, the poster that's behind me. Um, and I, I a for this beforehand. Um, a shapeshift mm -hmm. man from Massachusetts, Massachusetts cut, cut off his cotton balls and now he's mm -hmm. got tits. Right, so that's that's the like the poem, that, that's the the uh, sort of humour that we, we, we should be mm -hmm. share. Um, but I also need to say as well that at first, when you launched your channel, um, I had an interest in you because I thought you were somebody else initially. Um, when you launched your channel, I thought it was something to do with Scottish politics and um, <laughs> and something in particular called called Spe PR, I think it was, right? And and you'll forgive me and and and, and humour me here. Um, this was who I thought you were initially. You had just dyed your hair. No, I know it's completely different. Um, but this is who I thought. That you oh, were. really? Yeah, ah. just for whatever reason. Um, however, that that was that was at first when you when I first seen your video, and then I watched your videos, mm -hmm. and I thought 
this is somebody that that I okay. Um, <clears throat> you've gone through you've gone through a, a, a change that, that that can no longer be rectified, but you're brave enough to right. to, to actually stand up or lie down in, in the in the instance it was with your with your video. <laughs> lie down, yeah. I and, down. And, bear, and bear yourself to the world, which is brave in itself, because you may have been conned into believing something that, that, that was impossible, changing from male to female. You've gone mm -hmm. through a process, you've mutilated your body, but then you're trying to send the message out that you now know that, well, wait a minute, I was, I was conned. This isn't possible. Don't do this. Don't medicalize yourself. Look what I've got to go for the rest of your life. Because, I mean, very brave at 23 years of age to say, well, well I, I, I'm, I've gone from this to this. And now I believe that it was wrong. Um, so it's, it's very brave and very, very strong of you. Um, and you as, for, as for trying to retire to the, to the, the, the seaside and what, what have you, um, I hope that that's that's what you can do. However, I believe that you've got a good a good message that you can send out to the youth. Um, and yeah, it didn't it didn't work out for you due to one thing or another because of the beliefs that you were led to believe. However, you can share that message and hopefully prevent others from trying to emulate what you had or what you you thought what you thought. Sorry so that you can just mm -hmm. be that gay boy who is right i mean what mm -hmm. was the phrase that you used was it demi De um i mean i i don't know I, i'm a, i'm a heterosexual man so is it demi is it uh, uh what was the phrase that you use had you not gone through the process of of, of trying to change from male to female is that um what is the word you're saying, Demi? I don't understand. <laughs> is it Demi, D-E-M-I, Demi. Ah, uh, Demi. Uh, I don't know. I, the only way I know demisexual, but that's like, I guess, I don't even know what that means. I think if I wasn't, I, I always think about it. Like, what if I never came across trans thing, right? Like, what if I lived uh -huh. in a certain society where trans wasn't a thing? I feel like I would just be a dude with longer hair, I guess, and some makeup on. Maybe, I don't know, I would have just been, you know, like some gay dude working in New York in fashion industry or something or in makeup, you know, that's what I would have been. Instead, I got convinced that I'm a woman, I'm just going to transition and live quietly my life as a woman, you know. I think I would have just either been that or maybe would have become a drag queen, just do shows and just sit on the stage and then <laughs> go home, like do gay things, hook up with dudes, I don't know. <laughs> but then I became a woman, I lost my sex drive. Like, I didn't become a woman, but woman look alike, I guess. I lost my sex drive and I realized that it wasn't a way, form of conversion <laughs> in a fucked up way because I, I got converted from being a gay man. And, so uh, confer to... conversion therapy is okay then? <laughs> I guess, no, it's not okay because I lost my light. My testosterone was a big part of who I was. <laughs> I miss being able to enjoy this, you know? And now I'm just like, I can take it or live it, you know? <laughs> to me, like things have changed, you know, because I don't have that much of a sex drive, you know? So yeah, so I feel like when I was gay, I was definitely more sexual, more enjoying myself, you know, more interested in other guys, you know? Now I'm just like, floating in time and space so yeah in a way I got converted from gay to whatever medicine thought woman is which is I guess not on estrogen right now I guess that's a mainstream thought that by taking estrogen a man can become a woman you know <laughs> but I don't know I did not like this woman experience that got sold to me honestly I don't I want a refund but I'm never getting a refund so <laughs> guys don't do it all the Scottish kids United Kingdom listen up people don't don't modify your bodies you're going to need your body parts <laughs> right Just don't do it especially so, when you're young you're going to need it down the line <laughs> exactly so um th there's there's something going through the Scottish Parliament at the minute um it's the the or what's known in Scotland as Gender Recognition Act, which is the Gender Recognition Reform Bill. Um, so what I would like to do, if you don't mind, is I have prepared um, a short video sketch 
um, that <laughs> takes into account the uh, the uh, uh, I'm trying to find where I am now because I've lost my place. Five of the stream. Um, that takes into account uh, what's happening in Scotland. Um, and I'd like to play that now, if that's okay. It's a, a six minute clip. So if the people that are watching don't mind, if you tune in for this, I will give you. Yeah, that's cool. I probably have another 15 minutes because then I have to go, but <laughs> I'll react to this. This, 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 will, this will see us to the end then, Shapeshift. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me. No, know. well, I'll react to this video. Yeah, no problem. But then, okay. unfortunately, I have to go because, you know, it's Saturday. <laughs> of course. So uh, here we go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this is Davy Antaville here. Yeah. I got all the Duffy. Nick the fish fox to up early today so that I could tune into this Equality and Human Rights Commission on children and what have you and impact and sport and that, right? I've got an interest in it anyway. So it's part of this CBC UK gig that I got that I get an order. It's only last much longer, I'll tell you that. But anyway, I better tune in here. I don't understand a word he's saying. What is he saying? Can you put subtitles on? <laughs> Sorry. Yep. This is it here. <laughs> I know I it's English it's language, but <laughs> I'm really struggling. Okay, give me a second. I'll put some thoughts on. As you said, I think it's the. Yeah, because I literally don't understand the, the a word. To that to show the number of children who are accessing the workforce that's in place to, to in local authorities to, to deliver on that. To ensure, to ensure there's develop, the development capacity to be able to deliver on the statutory duty for 11 40 hours. Right, it's just that it says on the tin, improvement service, and I would have thought improvement had to do with outcomes, but there we go. I learn something new every day. It, can I come to Matthew Definitely. Sweeney from COSLA then, please? Uh, th thanks, Adam. Um, and Matthew, the, roughly the same question, I suppose, is, is in yeah. COSLA's view, this about childcare or is it about education? I think it's about both. I think it's an important issue I think that you've highlighted there because I think there's always going to be an element of how we do both well. But I think that's part of why it, the policy is ambitious. I'm interrupting Michael to bring Willie back in and then we'll go back to Michael. I'm just, um, we're not really getting to the nub of this, but I mean, in 2010, there were 1,500 nursery teachers. There's now only 700. Doesn't that give an indication that we've moved from education to just childcare, Matthew. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I think that, that there's a couple of things within that. I think that I, I, I repeat the point that I just made to, to Michael Mara about the, the disinvestment in local government services, and I think that there's always going to be impacts um, when those happen. Um, I, I, the other thing I think I would flag is obviously that there are different ways that we might look at a graduate workforce within ELC, and obviously some of the newer qualifications, the BHOs, in practice. They may not be officially titled as nursery teachers, but they are providing that um, graduate level of uh, support and, uh, you know, pedagogy and leading pedagogy and settings, whether that be necessarily the right way. But I think it would be undeniable to say that the impact of reductions in local government funding hasn't impacted on, on sort of some of the ways in which... Uh, can, can, terms of can I just push a wee bit back on that? I mean, I'm not a defender of the government, but COSLA have accepted that the settlement for the early learning childcare offer was going to meet the needs. Um, so therefore, I, I find it difficult. I know there's been a reduction so in the last year. Basically, what I've already seen here is that there's gaps for folk like has been funded, so I'm puzzled as to the Deville to exploit. Over that so this CBC UK gig is quite an inside gig. So I, I so I'll need to thank Nick yeah. the Fish for that. Nick the fish fox for that, but she's made a deal with me. Anyway, let's get back into this. See what else scats we can find. <laughs> different graduate ways are happening. It's not just teachers. There are the, the new qualifications that are coming in at the same thing. Okay, hundred businesses gone, eight thousand places gone. Um, 
and Graham that I mean, this is I'm having hard times understanding this. <laughs> Recognise this policy is there, so but they still access wraparound childcare. Right. Access work. What are they talking oh. about? Like, I'm so confused. There's somebody else coming oh. in, in my pocket. What are they trying to pass? Uh, or... I'll, I'll give you an explanation just now, then, Shapeshifter. Yes, basically, please, because I don't understand. <laughs> right, basically, what's happened here is the uh, um, Scottish government are trying to introduce um, measures into. Scottish life that give men the right to self-identify as women on a feeling. Okay? Um, no, that should not pass. To change, <laughs> to change their birth certificates, to change their birth markers, um, that gives them the right to access safe spaces, women's safe spaces, women's prisons, um, and basically, um, the, at the age of 16, to make a, a decision that will change their life, like you have done, uh, in reverse oh, no. for, for, young, for a young women's case, they, they will take, they will medicalise children. I mean, they're sending, there's, there have been 51 so far. Um, I don't know how many there have been. The 51 at the last count I was aware of, kids sent down to the opposite part of this 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 island to have the breast removed um at the age of 16 or uh, or under the age of 18. so, so the, the opposite, of, the opposite of your situation you know the opposite of your situation when you've, when yeah. you've made that 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 decision to mutilate your body mm -hmm. point it can't be changed back um, in reverse for young females and, and this is what's happening in Scotland at the minute and there's a lot of parents that aren't aware of the, the dangers um, what message would you send them if you could because I mean that, this, this finishes us up for this evening if you don't mind I feel like they definitely shouldn't be doing this because these are just kids who probably if they're going to grow out of it or they just need some help and support some therapy like these are permanent decisions. How at 16 you can tell this is what you want for the rest of your life. Like, this is just mind boggling. Especially if they do genital surgeries, as somebody who's been through the system, they couldn't even give me a few inch tunnel that stays open. Do you think for female to male, they're gonna be able to construct penis and stuff? Like, no. <laughs> they just don't have the technology and surgeries to be able to do that. Like. The whole trans care here, especially for general surgery, is one just giant circle jerk. I talk to so many people, they have complications, go to a different surgeon, and it's like they're all being just passed around. And <laughs> they don't know how to do those surgeries right, they don't have the right tissues. But beyond that, it's just like it's a permanent decision that's going to affect that child's life till the rest of their life, even if they just remove their breasts. Like, People like, oh, it's double mastectomy. Like they can always get implants later on if they want to. That's BS. It will never be the same. You know what I mean? Like I can remove my breast too, but like I'm going to have saggy skin. I'm going to have scars. Once you cut into your body, you're going to have a scar. <laughs> Even now, after I got the surgeries, I wasn't able to enjoy my body because all I could think of, I was looking at my scars and I was just obsessing over it. It's just not cute. There is no way somebody at 16 can know that that's the right thing for them. Just because they feel masculine, even though they were born women, doesn't mean they're meant to be men, you know? <laughs> doesn't mean they can become men or they should, you know? So it's like, as somebody who's been through this, I felt very feminine. Women don't own femininity, but they own womanhood, you know? There is some feminine men out there and there's some masculine women, but that's all there is to it. It doesn't mean they need surgeries and drugs or try to become actual opposite sex. Like that's first of all impossible and second of all it's not safe i'm just saying it right now this is going to be saved on the internet down the line as more research comes around they're going to realize this was not safe this was a really bad idea and honestly a lot of people are going to be too late they won't be able to go back and redo this because this is bullshit those kids don't need surgery it's like maybe one out of all the people they did surgeries on one or two i don't believe like if there are real trans people, as I said, they're not in the numbers that we're seeing right now. I think these are just gender non-conforming gay kids that are confused. They think that trans is a thing and they are trans. I was convinced too, I'm not trans, I'm just a dude. Like, <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is straight up dangerous. Like, I, I'm hoping that 
in the United States will be able to ban these type of surgeries. In Texas, they already banned it. Oh my God, no, just no. Yeah, I mean, I'm, so just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just showing, um, I'm just showing shapeshifter some of the things that have happened. I mean, this mm-hmm. is, the, this is the opposite. This and breaks I, my heart. I, I mean, if you look at, I wish you, I could go back in time. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the age or, or the face, um, of these people here, they look very young in age. I mean, is this similar to the age that you, wow. that, that you were influenced? Um. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm 31, so I had my surgery at 24, like I've been talking about that online. I was influenced at 19, like 19, 20. I would say, yeah, 20. So I was like an adult and I got influenced and brainwashed very quickly. <laughs> like, so those are even more vulnerable kids because they're literally just came into the world not that long ago. They don't know how the world works. It kind of takes time to realize who you are, how society works, how gender roles play or don't play out. You know, it's just like, it's way too early to make such a permanent mighty modification. Even just the top surgery, it's like, what if that person grows out and realizes that being a woman is not that bad, or like maybe that person is a certain type of woman that's just a minority, but that person is still a woman, you know what I mean? <laughs> what are they gonna do now? Like once they remove all those breasts at 14, like that's crazy. Like or what, that looks really young, that looks underage for sure. Those yeah. are children, like, I mean, I'm heartbroken. That's one of the reasons why I'm speaking up about this because I'm just upset because I was so convinced. I'm like, no matter what, I don't need my penis. I will never regret this. I'd much rather be like somebody with no penis than with the penis, you know, I'd rather be a woman look alike. But now I'm like, fuck, I should have just been a man. I should have never given my life over to surgeons. The surgeons really don't give a fuck, you know, they really think that they're helping these people, but it honestly comes down to a dollar. I'm telling yeah. you, this is all about money. As somebody I, who's been through the system, they they really don't care about these children. And you know what the problem is? There's separation. Psychiatrists give letter, and then surgeons like, well, psychiatrists gave letter, so I'm just going to do my job. You know, they kind of mentally dissociate that these are children. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's oh mental. My God. I'm so upset right now. No, I, 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 I can understand. Right, I, I would like to get your thoughts on this. Could you tell me, um, what what was this here? Do you know what this is here? Would you say that's? I don't know who this person is. No, you know, would you say it's a I, man or a woman? I don't know who that is. It's hard to tell. It's, I mean, my brain sees it as a female, but I'm sure it's, it's a, a man probably. If you're asking me. No, it's no, 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 no. I'm just asking you. Just that you look. What would you say? It's a man or a woman? How does it present? I see a woman because right, woman. I mean, again, we're well, all kind what, of gender what, things. What, what about this here? It looks like a man to me, but I'm sure exactly. I'm, I got exactly. it. I'm sure you're, you're, that. Exactly, you're exactly one hundred percent correct. Their shapeshifter it is. It's a man and a woman, uh, but Stella Creasy believes that uh, that a woman can have a penis. Um, no, no. You, you, would you, would you say that 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 is from your belief and from your experience? that that is correct or incorrect? No, because I do have friends, at least like one friend who kind of transitioned at the same time I did and he kept his dick. And honestly, even when I, I mean, we're no longer friends, but being everything I've been through and not having a penis, even though I didn't become a woman, I mean, there is no way, like the fully functional penis that's a woman, you know what I mean? I just like, just know when you have a male sex drive and you have balls, you're not a woman. I'm sorry, like you're just not. Like, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's all I have to say. From my perspective, women don't have penises. I mean, I don't have a penis, and I'm still not a woman. So, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> but, like, you, but 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 you I'm, used to but you used to have one. When, when I you used were... to have one, yeah. I did have one and I don't know, I was so brainwashed that I was modeling myself after a woman and in my mind woman doesn't have a penis, you know? So when I was transitioning, I already knew I was gonna like, when I was in deep in ideology, I knew that I'm gonna remove my penis because the woman I was modeling myself after don't have penis, you know? <laughs> so obviously like, and in my mind, I'm still sticking with that. Like there is no way. Yeah. I mean, even now, like, as somebody who lost my penis, I'm way more vulnerable. Like I can't lift things up. I can't protect myself. Even with little testosterone that I got back in my body, I'm still not as strong as I used to be, you know? And definitely like 
some of those men shouldn't be in female spaces. And for I have a sister, like I don't want somebody with a dick around her, you know. <laughs> but there's changing room or like no, I don't. Like I don't. To be, Sorry. To be fair, she shift, to be fair, shape shifter. Whenever you're speaking, I'm sitting here crossing my legs, going, oh, I don't, I, I, I just couldn't have done what you've done. No, no, mate, no, no, no. I know. Um, I'm cringing like, now too. Trust me, I'm cringing I, now. I can too, understand. I can understand why. Um, <laughs> Um, I mean, there's there's times that I lean down and, and go, thank fuck you're still there. But anyway, um, for this evening and for um, your very very honest conversation, I would like to say thank you. Um, if thank anybody you for has been, me. oh, you're welcome. If anybody's been listening tonight, Shapeshifter has been honest enough to give the full um, from start to finish. If there's anything that they can help you with outside of this uh, live stream you can contact shapeshifter on twitter at shapeshifter or shifter of shapes is that correct uh yeah on twitter shifter of shapes and on youtube i uh, just shapeshifter you guys can follow me and see my journey like how my life is shaping right now <laughs> it's all shaping up i am going to continue speaking up about dangers of surgeries i'm going to make surgeons to realize that they're doing bad science. <laughs> the psychiatrists should do better follow up on their patients. And um, yeah, we need better science around this whole situation. And for sure, I'm gonna fight for banning of surgeries and hormones for kids under 18 and hopefully under 25. Like that's what I'm fighting for right now. I'm gonna keep on fighting. Thank you guys for having me. If any parents hear this or have trans kids, just get your kids some therapy, try to keep them off social media so they don't get influenced by bullshit. <laughs> um, try to get them outside to play, don't let them be on computers too much because <laughs> that's where all the drama starts and all the influences. And yeah, just like if somebody is considering body modifications, don't do any body permanent body modifications, whether it's gender, sex surgery, whatever, or any other plastic surgery, just learn to love yourself as is. That's the message I want to put out. All those plastic surgeries did not make me happy. I'm in therapy now trying to learn how to be happy and live as an adult male, adult human male. I'm still trying to gather pieces of my life and trying to make something out of leftovers. And I am trying to write a book, um, but if the book comes out, you guys will know about it. But I haven't made much progress yet. So I'm, I still like, as I'm going through my experience, I'm still more shaping in my mind what I want in, in the book and what I don't. So yeah, hopefully that will come out in a few months. We'll see. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for having me. I, it turned out better than I thought. I'm still a little scared going on like a little podcast because I'm like, a few a few months ago, if somebody said you're a man who cut off his dick, I would lose my shit. Now it's like, I don't give a fuck. I honestly just my goal is to help people to understand better that the surgeries are not what they're sold as. And that's my main goal. Whatever it takes, I will do that. <laughs> well, I, I honestly thank you very much, Shapeshifter, for, for, for bearing your soul um, and, and putting yourself out there. And I wish nothing but the best for you. And if it inspires you, other people like yourself to think a wee bit Come forward, more, yeah. before they do anything, then you've done your bit. So thanks very much for, for uh, taking part this evening. And I'll say good night from now. Thank you. Good night, Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.